Alrighty, well, good morning, peeps. And, uh, well, this morning, or actually, no, excuse me, technically yesterday, um, I went ahead and purchased the uh, D and D Fifth Edition Player's Handbook online. Uh, I think it was like discounted or something, but uh, I think I paid like 15, 20 bucks for it. So seemed like a good deal at, at the time, and plus, uh, since I got a, uh, I have I'm getting uh three paychecks in the month of September. I figured, nah, I could probably spend it for it. So, but what I thought I'd go ahead and do is uh, since I did that, um, I think I did this once or twice before. Um, after like, like I think creating my uh, monk character and then finding out that the uh, very basic rules of the game are free to use on, on um, on this website here, D and D Beyond. Um, but I thought I'd go ahead and do the same thing here. Just kind of do a do like a, a quick perusal of this book. I'm most likely I'm not going to be going through the whole entire thing. Um, I'm trying to keep this around 20, 30 minutes, but we'll we'll see how that goes. But like I usually do in the background, um, I'm going to have some music going. And this time around, it's, it's called Frere, F-R-E-R. That's the name of the band, I guess. Um, and then Crepuscular Glare of Wisdom. But it's it's classified as Dungeon Synth, which I'll, I'll just say close enough. But uh, it, it's really good library music. It's like real laid back. So perfect for something like this. Um, there was another, uh, it wasn't my first choice. There was a first option. It, it just popped up on my YouTube recommendations. It's called Ivalice in Chill. It's, uh, so it's selected tracks from, uh, three different games, Final Fantasy Tactics, Final Fantasy 12, and, uh, they're two of my all-time favorite RPGs, by the way. And then Vagrant Story, where game I've only heard the name of. I've never actually seen it or played it, but I'm waiting... I'm waiting for the copyright check to come back on that because uh, earlier it was uploaded, but I'm still waiting for it to process and all that so I can get a yay or nay from them. Okay, here we go. Processing at 95%, but it's it's still going to be too long a wait. So. so let me go ahead and get the music going. And I did do a sound check on this earlier, so it should be okay. But otherwise, let's get her going. Oh damn! I'm I'm assuming they're talking about Gary Gyax here, but I never do that. So if I'm reading this right, Gary Gyax was a Minnesotan like myself. Holy shit, I never knew that. I always thought he came from like like California or New York City or something like that, but Minnesota and Wisconsin. The least likely places in my opinion. I mean heck, I could probably spend uh 20, 30 minutes just on this preface alone. I retired, I'm merely reading tales about those worlds rather than observe them. Well, this, well, this kind of derailed in a hurry. Look at this shit up. Um, Gary... Okay, Chicago, Illinois. Then he died in uh, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. So, Dave Arnson? Holy shit! I never knew that. I mean, I mean, not quite the most legendary name uh, compared to like uh, Gary Gyax, but I. Well, that's a little bit mind blown because, like I said a few moments ago, I mean, you know, these two guys struck me as. 
struck me as the kind of people that came, they probably came from like Seattle, Washington or Los Angeles, California or Miami, Florida, you know, or any of those big mover and shaker cities. Sure as hell not Hennepin County or St. Paul, Minnesota. Completely unexpected. So. Okay, wasn't there intent? Okay, but I'm, I'm for the most part, I'm just going to be uh, skimming over this. Oh yes, as one who's played um, as one who's played RPGs and MMOs for at least at least 15 years, oh yeah, I know all this too well. Okay, and um, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. Hold on. Imagination or more willing to do whatever imagination you have. Yup. The first characters and adventures you create will probably be a collection of cliches. Um, I don't even remember the very, 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 very first character I created, but I do know that, um, I want to say the, the class was available in the first edition. It was the monk. Um, and I think it was an optional class. It wasn't, it wasn't standard issue. But yeah, that, that was the actual class that I was really into, and I'm like that to this day. I'm a monk guy. Now, as far as cliches go, I, um, I wish I could remember the very, very first character I ever created. It was probably late 80s, early 90s or something. But it probably, it was, it probably wasn't some cliche character. Again, my favorite class uh, back then and now is the Monk. So, it does have that, so. And this is one thing I definitely like about D&D Beyond right here. You can just, you can click this, go back to Table of Contents. And yeah, there's there's cover art, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually look like a book. So. And then let me uh, check my OBS real quick. Oh, it looks looks kind of scrunched, but it's gonna have to do. It's gonna have to work. Oh, let me uh, check my uh. Okay, never mind. So, Evil East and Chill is definitely a no go. Yeah, cause it's there's a uh, there's copyrighted music on it. Let me see exactly what. But if it's like the whole entire video, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. That's it. There's like uh, I think there's like at least three or four hours worth of music on this. Only, yeah, only one single song out of all of this is uh, copyrighted. I mean, I, I can't, I can't play the video on, I can't play the music on this video, but still, there's something that has to be said for, for the people that make this music. Okay, I'll come back to that later. Yeah, because I'm going to get going on this. So, about storytelling. And, um... <clears throat> now, I had a I had a bunch of first edition books before I had to sell them because I was broke. I was broke at the time. Um, I also have a bunch of uh, second edition books. 
But, uh, this, after, um, after checking out a bunch of D&D content, like, modern day stuff, storytelling, this is a word that I don't, I don't recall seeing a whole lot of back in the day. So, I think this is a, this is a recent paradigm right here. But like I said, a lot of the videos that I've watched, they talk, they mention storytelling a lot. Yeah, whereas, um, back in the day, that was the big, that was the big word, role playing. But again, um, for the most part, I'm just going to be uh, skimming over a lot of this. And just, if something piques my interest, I'll highlight it. I'll highlight it and talk about it. Well, Ravenloft. That's... I think it's like a... Like a gothic version of a D&D. &D. This is something else too I'm, I'm starting to notice. Um, in a lot of the other um, D and D books, I I probably include Shadowrun in here as well, but uh, they actually have a, a bit of a very bit of a variation on how they on the, how their uh, player's handbook works. But they're they're actually breaking down the act of role playing on here. In all the other content that I've checked out over the years, it's like. The whole entire story of what they're talking about, like all the combo and all the dice rolls, etc., all of it was just one big chunk, one big story, and then after you've read that whole story, then they then they um, explain stuff afterwards. But it looks like here they're just, they're um, breaking it down into different sections. So I'm. I can't help but think that this is the quote-unquote accessibility that they uh, they also keep on uh, mentioning about fifth edition. They're actually they're not just uh, based. How can I explain this? They're not just paying lip service to it. They're actually explaining how it works. Consequences. Players roll dice. Resolve with their character. <laughs> Um, yeah. Yeah, there is here. Okay. Maybe, maybe let's check it out. God, there was something I was wanting to say about this. I can't remember what it was. It totally slipped my mind. Dude, one moment. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I had to sneeze. Anyway, let me... And I'll bet, um... And I'll bet if you're... If you're good enough with your character, if you're good enough in the gate at the game... You could probably just go ahead and um, just tell your DM, "Hey, I'm gonna make an investigation check on this. Do I need, or do I need to make an investigation check on, on this, or you know that kind of thing?" was uh I think the uh the RPG system called GURPS G U R P S GURPS I think uh I think they either refer to the DM as either the GM, the game master, and or the referee. 
So, different systems have uh, different ways of return to Dungeon Master. Yep, and I've also, uh, I've also seen, um, seen videos and, uh, heard and read stuff about some of these campaigns. Um, I saw one, it was on the, uh, it was on the YouTube channel Insider. The guy on there, he's got a, he's got a currently ongoing campaign that's been running for 30 years. But holy shit, that's a, that's a guy that knows how to plan ahead. And plus, uh, I just, I just now thought of this too, that's, uh, I'm also assuming that he's had the same he's had the same players in his campaign for over 30 years too. If that's the case, that guy's got some fucking loyalty on his crew. I mean, I'm used to I'm used to most uh, most DMs complaining about just getting a group together. It's like it's hurting cats or something. But yeah, but for a guy running a 30-year campaign, yeah, that's pretty damn impressive. Yeah, and they're saying it here too. Keeping the campaigns going for months or years. Okay, I'm looking at something. <laughs> or done in by a nefarious villain or by a vindictive DM like the player did something that pissed off the DM and now he's gonna try to have him killed oh I just thought of this too um character, the other adventures can search for powerful magic to revive their fallen Conrad or the the player might choose to create a new character to carry on. I am I think this is probably one of the reasons why my favorite um my favorite video game RPG is Darkest Dungeon. That's how this game that's how that works. Because in that game there there's permadeath. When if your if your character gets killed in a dungeon and he's gone for good. So there's no, it ain't like Final Fantasy to cite an example. If your party wipes, you just simply reload your save game. In uh, Darkest Dungeon, you can't do that. And I think the, the game saves constantly too. So. So if your character is about, if your character is about to die, or I should say at least one of your characters is about to die, you can't just alt F4 of the game because the same, the game probably, probably saved your saved your game like just before the battle started or something so but anyway I'm gonna take another drink you know and it's, and it's not like other uh it's not like other MMOs uh with RuneScape being the exception if your party wipes you just restart back at the spawn point but again not like not in Darkest Dungeon if they're gone they're gone for good And this is a, uh, yeah, this here is another word. This is basically a new paradigm right here, multiverse. I want to say, um, oh God, what game was it? I think it was Injustice. Injustice, Injustice 2, one of them. I Maybe maybe it was just the word that uh, NetherRealm Studios, the company that makes uh, Mortal Kombat and uh, the Injustice series, I think, I think they were the ones that came up with the concept of multiverse. But like I said, again, back in the day, I never even heard of this word. I guess I'm 
kind of have a wild hair up my ass about it, so here, let's... Wee. Multiple universes. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm thinking multiverse as it, as it pertains to video games. So, early recorded examples, ancient Greek, atomism. Uh, 1952, or 1895. Yeah, I'm not really seeing it here. This might be something worth reading, though, later on. But like I said, I I didn't know about a multiverse until... Yeah, you can't see the right side of it. Yeah. Occam's Razor. I've heard this term before. Yeah, it, it don't it don't say. But like I said, I mean my main interest with the multiverse uh, is is how it pertains to video game, video games. But like I said, I never never really heard the term multiverse until I started seeing uh like Injustice Injustice Two. Um, I don't think I've seen a uh, Mortal Kombat 10, 10 and eleven. I can't remember if they talked about it. But yeah, anyway, I got, I got to move along, and I am going to be um. Probably at the end of this chapter here, I'll probably end up calling it good. But just going to keep skimming. I, okay, here, I, here it is, here it is. Back in the day, this is what I, this is what I thought it was. Just simply planes of existence, you know prime material plane, the one we all live on. Uh, you had elemental planes of air, fire, earth, water. Then you have the positive plane, the negative plane. Then you have the uh, various alignment-based realms where all the, you know, like, I can't remember the name, but it's where all the lawful good people go when they die, or this is where you go, or the 666 layers of the abyss. This is where all the chaotic evil people go when they die, that kind of thing. But like I said, that's what I... This is what I've always known it as, the planes of existence, not the multiverse. And uh, some of the stuff, um, I'm sorry if I'm stating the obvious, but all the RPG games that you've all played over the years, that you've all come to know and love, for the most part, is going to follow this exact pattern right here. DM describes the environment, but in a video game, you're already seeing that. But it's blatantly obvious in turn. In, the, in a turn-based RPG, you're gonna get, you know, again, Final Fantasy comes to mind. A lot of, most of it's uh, turn-based. You get a little list of options, you know, shoot, run, run, defend, that kind of thing, so. So having a task is easy. And there we go. Like I said, pretty much, pretty much every single RPG you guys play follows this format. <laughs> I heard a, I heard another cool term for it in one of the uh, videos I watched recently: math rocks. <laughs> I love that. 
if I could ever remember to, if I was to ever play D&D like an actual real-life tabletop, if I could ever remember to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to the dice as that math rocks. And I'm going to check something. Yeah. I guess so. Uh, I guess they have percentile dice in 5th edition. I never knew they did. When I was creating my character and stuff, um, I didn't see a whole lot of it, but back in the day, 1st, 2nd, or 1st edition, 2nd edition, I think maybe 3rd edition too, they had percentile dice. You use uh, two 10-sided dice, and they had to be different colors so you can tell which digit is which. I'm going to take another drink. Um, Tooltip should be coming up. I mean, whoops. There it is. Yeah, I think uh, dice rolls on here work a little bit differently from previous editions. Um, I I think starting in third edition, um, they're just uh they're flat difficulty numbers that you have to beat. I think um in uh, first and second edition, whatever your attribute number is, like let's just say for example, fifteen. You would have to, you would have to roll a d20, and then um whatever you this whatever whatever roll you got had to be less than had to be less than your rating. Like again, 15. You had to roll at least a 15 or less to be a success. Now the way they're doing it is it, it's like a it's like a universal difficulty system. I'm like um an easy difficulty would be a five. You had to roll at least a five to pass. Um, normal or medium, you had to at least roll a 10 to pass. Um, then there's difficult, 15, etc. And then, um, yeah, we'll show. Something else I like about D&D Beyond, a lot of the stuff on here is clickable. So let's go to ability scores. Yep, there it is. This is how the uh, ability scores work. But like I said, back in the day, whatever your score was, let's just say for example 12, if you had to do an ability an ability check, you had to roll at least a 12 or less for it to pass. But now there are flat universal numbers that you have to beat. And um, depending on and. The higher your attribute, the the bigger the bonus you got, like plus two, for example. Yep, target number. I just remembered. Uh, Shadow Run. That that you that game there uses target numbers. I mean, there are um, there are opposed checks where you're um, you're. You're directly competing against, say, another NPC, trying to get a better roll than him. But otherwise, uh, Shadowrun, it uses target numbers. Yeah, difficulty class. That's the, that's the word. Yep. And this is this is another um, this is an attempt by them to simplify things. If you have advantage on a roll. 
you got to roll two 20-sided dice, and you got to keep the better of the two scores. Or if you have disadvantage, same thing. You roll two 20-sided dice, but you keep the worst of the two rolls. Pacific Beach General. Yeah. Yeah. It... So I, I think the way this reads, if I'm understanding it, um. If a specific mechanic, like say, elves are immune to charm, maybe not the best one, but uh, if there was a, like as a general rule, like as a general rule, like if somebody cast charm on you, then you're charmed. But, el but again, elves, they're, um, one of their racial abilities is they're immune to charm attacks, so that specific I'm thinking that's how it works, or I'm I'm trying to explain this as best I can. But yeah, I've, that's this is a new one on me. I know uh, in Magic: The Gathering, there's you're going to be coming across a lot of conflicting rules, a lot of conflicting mechanics. If there's a if there's a mechanic that says you can do something, or I should say that that says you can do X. And if there's also a mechanic of play at that same time that says you can't do X, can't takes precedence over it. So, um, however, then that, however that would apply to here, you know. Okay, and they're around. Yep. Yep. Okay, so adventures. All right, so. So, as it's been about a half an hour now, actually it's been a little bit over half an hour. Um, so I'll just go ahead and call it good here. Um, and then whenever I get a chance next time, I'll go ahead and pick up where I left off here. But I think, uh, yeah, um, I left off at Adventures, or, I, or I'll start at Adventures um, whenever I come back to try to do one of these again. So, but otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that, and um, I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.